look at the CNBC Magnificent 7 Index. You know who those names are. Up more than 70 percent in one year. AI, of course, one of the main catalysts here. But my next guest is focusing on names beyond big tech for the next leg of AI growth. He has arranged them into three separate categories, AI enablers, supporters, and users. And he brings a top value pick in each. Joining me now for more is Aaron Dunn, co-head of value equity at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. Aaron, thanks for being with us. Um, what is a value pick? How do you determine that? Is it a more reasonable valuation? Because we've seen sort of the valuation in the AI space just kind of go to the moon over the last year? Yeah, our, our, our team really focuses on intrinsic value. So we look at uh, what's what's a really an undervalued stock or an undervalued company in the marketplace. That's how we define value. It's not relative value. And I think, um, you know, when you're looking at some of the growth rates, they're pretty eye-popping for a lot of these stocks. But we, we really focus on for our clients is finding opportunity in the market uh, that has been overlooked in our opinion. Um, and as you said, there's uh, you know there's a couple of buckets. I put some some ideas in here, yeah. uh, and we can talk. Yeah. yeah, please do, because a lot of the focus, um, at least in this early stage, has been on chips or the semiconductors, seen as the picks and shovels of the AI shift. Where else are you looking? Yeah, so in the uh, in the enabler side, or, or the that, that's what I would uh, we'll start there. And I think Micron is one that we've held actually for quite a while. And the reason we initially entered uh, Micron was because you have a consolidated memory chip business. It's an old uh, commodity business, as most tech people would uh, suggest. But when you have a consolidated industry, you start to have better pricing power. And what's really occurred with that, you had a you had a down cycle. And the one reason we really liked it was the balance sheet was exceptional, right? They entered the downturn with uh, net cash on the balance sheet. So that gives us a buffer of safety. What has happened for Micron, though, is with NVIDIA, uh, with NVIDIA's GPU development, they've also developed a high bandwidth memory, HBM. So uh, this gives, uh, it sits right along next, next to the GPU. Uh, they've got a really good position with NVIDIA as a partner in that. Uh, that also allows 30% energy efficiency savings. Uh, NVIDIA talked about that as well. Uh, when they had their most recent uh, developer uh, conference. And so uh, in our view, there's a lot here to like about Micron. And if you go back to the uh, kind of 2021, 2020 period, there was a real shortage of memory chips. Right. Uh, and we really had a pinch. We feel like you're back at that point also. So there's a couple things going on with Micron that we think uh, you still get a really nice valuation and a lot of upside. Let me ask you about another name, Snowflake. It, Snowflake. it feels kind of controversial for, let's call it, AI enthusiasts right now. It was seen sort of as maybe this earlier play, um, a lot of data analytics, but others have pointed out slow in growth, been slower to embrace AI in terms of M&A activity. It's sort of abrupt CEO transition. Where are you on this name? Yeah, so Snowflake's not one we we hold or uh, we invest in, so I don't really want to speak to that uh, as an investor. Um, I'll just say, you know, I think there's a lot of places here uh, within, you know, the spaces we operate where there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, and we do look for management changes and stuff, as you mentioned, with Snowflake. And I think that's a key way to create value for our clients. Um, but, you know, I think just focusing on the rest of the value chain within AI gives us plenty of opportunity. Tell me about the AI supporters. You say that they're the least understood area today and perhaps some of the best opportunities. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion about it. And I, and I think when I say supporters, I'm thinking utilities. Utilities yeah. were the worst relative performance in 40 years last year as a sector. It's off to a slow start again this year uh, relative to the market. But it's actually very interesting. Uh, the, the compound annual growth rate of uh, electricity demand for many decades prior to you know, the, the 2000 period was you know, 4% plus. And then we entered this period of really flat demand. What we're seeing with uh, AI today is a reemergence of growth within the utility sector. So how do these hyperscalers develop and provide uh, or get the electricity they need uh, to develop these data centers? And that's going to be through the utility sector. You saw a nuclear deal uh, that Amazon did uh, to to secure some nuclear power. That's considered green, or it's more increasingly being mm -hmm. considered green energy. So we, we would look at a company like Nextera, clear leader in renewable development, uh, got a lot of uh, um, uh, competitive advantages across the sector for helping municipal utilities across the country uh, and their own and their own pipeline, frankly, to develop renewables to supply to data centers. We think that's extremely yeah. interesting. Um, thank you so much for your picks. Certainly the shift is going to require a lot of compute power. Thanks for being with us. Aaron Dunn.